Hey folks, it's Egwin here from Beyond Systems. Welcome everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now today I'm here in Titipatu Club in Ubud. Um, it's a beautiful place, especially when you're into sports, into swimming, but also into relaxing and just simply hanging out in a wonderful surrounding, wonderful atmosphere. It's absolutely stunning and amazing. Good food, really nice people, awesome place to network and so on. And I'm here currently also to teach. I have regular classes at this place and sometimes I just use this place to do videos like this one today for the next part of our core series. We talk about the plank again. We talked about the glutes, we talked about our core area. Let's jump right into the next stage, which is talking a little bit about the arms and the feet, which is sort of another element of the plank position. I told you it's quite a complex one. So let's have a look at this. First of all, if you have troubles with your wrist, some of you might have troubles loading your wrist in full dorsiflexion. If this is a problem for you, then I suggest the following. First of all, either you put something underneath the base of your palm here, like say a small bag of tissues or a book maybe of two or three centimeters of height at the most, so roughly an inch, something like that. Anything that helps you to elevate the base of your hand, of your palm, in comparison to the distal part of your palm where then eventually your fingers originate from. Because this, when you lift the base of your palm, it will reduce the angle, obviously, of the dorsiflexion, which helps you a lot to take pressure off, off the wrist joint. Another possibility, the one I always choose because it's really a nice and stable one without any props needed, is sort of to span the hand out and use a hollow hand rather than a completely flat hand. I'm probably gonna talk about that somewhere in the near future a little more. But see, there is a difference between me putting the hand down completely flat on the ground like this or putting the pinky finger edge of the hand back down on the ground and then sort of extending the hand out all fingers, the tips of all fingers, have solid contact with the ground. But I can still fit a couple of fingers underneath my actual hand. Why is this important? Now I have an active hand. I can press. I have a lot more control because I can press through the tips of my fingers. My hand is pretensed. And in this state, the forces are transmitted between radius and ulna much more biomechanically efficient than you would have with a completely flat palm. It's not just me saying that this is a good way to go. There is one, I call him uh, someone who is sort of into a, a modern, modern, more modern approach of yoga, a more fluid approach of yoga, Carlos Tao. He's amazing. He also talks about this and he calls this sort of a spider web to actually open the fingers out, to span out spider web in the palms and throughout the whole body. And many other people actually who are into hand balances and handstands and so on, calisthenics, they start to work with a hollow hand or active hand position rather than a flat one because it takes pressure off the wrists. That being said, let's just jump into the plank. So, when we have both arms down on the ground, we want them to be roughly for the basic position. As I said, a plank can be quite a fluent thing, but for the basic version, we want both hands roughly to be at shoulder distance from each other, not too far out, not too close to the, together. All of those would be variations already. We want the hands pretty much to be underneath our shoulders from all perspectives. So even when I go into this tabletop or then eventually also blank position like this, I want my arms and hands to be underneath my shoulders. So rather than sitting back like this or coming towards to the front like this, for the basic plank position, make sure that the arms and hands are in one line underneath the shoulders. This being said, 
Make sure that you do not overextend the elbow. This is extremely important. Make sure that your elbow is in neutral and not locked completely back here into the olecranon. This is important. Then also regarding your shoulder plates. When you take a look at this portion up here, when I go into this plank position, See, now I'm just hanging between my shoulders. I want to actively protract my shoulders, so I actively want my shoulder blades to be engaged and completely solidly on my thorax. Now, this is what I want. I push my arms out and down into the ground actively. That's very important for the basic position that I said we're gonna work with right now. And then there is another element. This other element is the exact opposite side, on the opposite side of our body, and it is our ankles. Now when you take a look at my ankles right now, I can completely hang into them passively like so. You'll see I also get a little bit sludgy with my whole posture. So from here, when I hang in my ankles like this, Normally, it also slightly compresses my lumbar spine. I try to avoid that, meaning I want my ankles to be engaged, meaning the calf muscles, the gastrocnemius and soleus muscle, they have to work actively to push the toes down into the ground, and I want roughly a 90-degree angle in my ankles down there like this as well, not this. If we hang in a posture just passively for prolonged periods of time, it potentially damages the passive structures back there, the ligaments, the tendons, and it also wears the muscle. This is not what we want. Plus, engaging the calf just so that we activate this palm of the, of the, of the foot pressing down into the ground, the ball of the foot pressing down into the ground, also helps to activate the zigzag muscular tension that runs through the body from the calves to the quads to the glutes to the core all the way back up towards the shoulders and then down into the arms. So literally my feet are my second polarity to my hands in a proper plank position. If I let go of the feet down there I lose my structure. I want this pressure point between my feet pressing to the front and my arms solidly pressing down into the ground. And from here, I also have the gluteal engagement already active in there. I also have my core already engaged in this posture. And making sure that I have a clear front part and a clear back part in my posture this already creates the idea of this arch that we are working with in a plank position. All right, that's it for today. We're gonna jump to the next element of plank in one of the next videos. Have a wonderful time, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment box down below, also regarding the wrists and so on and so on. If you wanna stay up to date with the core series, and you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll get the next videos right into your email inbox. Have a wonderful time, thanks for watching and see you around soon guys, bye.